to get up. Anybody here know he got up? Shout somebody he got up. Tell somebody he's alive and well. He's alive and well. Let me tell you what he did. He I say good morning to everyone. This is uh, Pastor Dwight Carter from the Morgan Road Missionary Baptist Church. Coming live to you from the home this morning. We have another broadcast this morning, time 11:15 from the Morgan Road Church, uh, part of the regular service. Uh, this is a small uh, portion of our sermon, our regular service today, and so we just try to do that before we go in for the ones that. Join us via Facebook Live on Sunday mornings. Uh, we won't detain you long. We try to do it in a 30-minute time frame. And probably everyone can uh, glean something from what is being said today. Uh, again, we won't detain you long. Our scripture reading comes from the 6th chapter of Matthew's Gospel. Very familiar uh, passage of scripture. 6th uh, chapter... 
Matthew's Gospel, ninth verse. And after this manner, therefore, ye pray, Our Father, which art in heaven, how will be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And we want to pause right here and say, and forgive us our debts that we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. But it's two uh, verses right behind there that is not part of the model prayer or what we would call the Lord's Prayer. And the two verses says, For if ye forgive man their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But you forgive that man their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to say thank you, Father. We thank you because you are God. We ask you to continue to lead us and guide us in the right direction. Father, Prop us up on every lane inside, everywhere we fall. Pick us up again, Father. Give us the strength. Give us the will to go on, Father. Father, sometimes we get weak along the journey, Father. We're not weak of the journey, but we get weak along the way, Father. Father, continue to guide us, lead us, and, and give us the will to go on. Now, Father, we ask that you look in on the sick shade and across the land. Continue to bless and keep them, Father, realizing that they need you and they can't make it without you. Father, neither can we make it without you, Father. Look in the coming lesson facility, Father, of special blessings for Miss Olsen Reed Archer, amen, the Versa Care in South Haven, and all our mothers of the Morgan Grove Church family. Continue to lead and guide us. Continue to keep us, Father. Now, Father, we ask that you will bless this uh, country, Father, bless the entire world as we go through this pandemic situation, Father, to have some of us still outside of the walls of the church, realizing, Father, for we are the church, Father, but we need to get back in the sanctuary, Father. Father, now continue to do what is your will, Father, and give us the strength, the mind, and understanding to know what your will is, Father, and to be able to follow, Father. Father, let us follow without question, Father, and do what we're asked to do. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, we read the scripture earlier, uh, it's part of our uh, sermon uh, for today, but our Lord's Prayer, our model of prayer, in the midst of that, uh, that uh, 14, excuse me, yeah, the 14th verse of that sixth chapter says, If ye forgive man their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. So we got to learn how to forgive and move past uh, these things that are hindering us hindered us for so long. Uh, it says quite uh, well within the uh, uh, Lord's Prayer, it says itself, it said, and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. So it's important that we move past some of the things that we have done uh, in the past or things that we have let uh, lie dormant for a period of time when we have opportunity, we need to straighten those things up and so we can get past those things. Uh, like anything that we burden down with too much uh, trial, tribulation, too many things on us, it's going to be hard for us to move forward. Our weekly uh, uh, salvation uh, mantra is that we try to use the ABCs of salvation. And the ABCs of salvation is simply says A, Admit you are a sinner and have made mistakes. B. Believe that Jesus, God's Son, died on the cross and rose up on the grave on the third day. Uh, confess. Confess Jesus as the Lord of your life and commit yourself to a life of following Jesus and serving others. And then I try to direct you each week to Romans 10, uh, verses 1 through 17, to give you a better understanding of the Roman road or the road to salvation. I believe if you ask God for forgiveness and ask him to come into your life, when well, God will do those things. We have made this uh, salvation uh, too hard for everybody to realize that everybody can be saved. I don't care what street you were born on. I don't care what street you've been down or what you did on those streets. God is standing there with open arms wanting to bring you in. As a young preacher 
and a young minister. I was taught by some of the, uh, the greats in the, in the North Mississippi area about the Bible and, and some of the things, uh, how to teach and what to teach on. But as I got older, I understood that most of the people, and I did say most because not all, but most of the people that I have opportunity to preach to or talk to, they have a great understanding about Jesus has saved them. They have a great understanding about Jesus has saved them. But me and them a lot, we have had a issue with how to live better once God has saved us. And so that's why I try to teach and preach on is that God wants us to live a more magnificent life. He has saved us. He has placed us on the right path. But some of the things that has us bound or has us in the past, we got to learn how to let those things go. Uh, if we read the New Testament, Paul tells us in all of the epistles, amen. He's writing unto the Christians as to how we should act and do things each and every day. It's not a loss about salvation and, and the epistles to uh, uh, the Ephesians or the Galatians or Philemon or uh, any of those uh, books. It's not a loss about salvation. Salvation is preached mainly in the first part of Acts. I mean, excuse me, yeah, Acts and Matthews and Luke and John, Mark. Uh, salvation is mainly preached. That don't mean salvation is not needed. But once you get later on over in the New Testament, it's begin to tell us how to live and how we need to respond and how we need to uh, have our ears open for false teachers and things like that. And so we got to learn how to live as God has told us to live. Our sermon this morning is coming from uh, Genesis, amen. It's part of our Sunday school lesson. And it centers around uh, Joseph and his uh Brothers, amen, uh, getting back together this uh, this morning. I don't know how many of you are, what, are going to be in Sunday school this morning, but you'll get a chance to hear part of this later on, amen. Just give me a second and we'll be right back with you and, and uh, with the sermon for the morning, amen. That's a second.
Amen, amen. Uh, that's uh, it's, uh, Carlene Strong Tate, amen, from the Brown Baptist Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, two things before we get into uh, the sermon this morning. One is our cash app is uh, Morgan Grove MBC. Morgan Grove MBC is our cash app. Our uh, P.O. Box is P.O. Box 192 Hernando, Mississippi 38632. So you can send your tithes and offers via that way. And as always, we appreciate your tithes and offering, but if you have a church home, make sure you support your church first, your home church first. Amen. God has a blessing uh, waiting on you for doing what is right by supporting your church and the ministries that they are trying to do at your home church. Amen. The church that you're a member of. Uh, I will... <clears throat> Our sermon this morning is coming from the book of Genesis, amen. It's going to be the 42nd uh, chapter. And I'm only going to read one verse and we, we just want to talk for a few minutes. Reuben replied, Then I tell you not to ascend against the boy, but you wouldn't listen. Now we must give an account for his blood. Again, that is Genesis, the 42nd chapter, the 22nd verse, NIV. We're going to use the same subject as the uh, Sunday school lesson. In the Sunday school lesson, it says, haunted by shame. It is important that we correct what we can when we have our opportunity. Amen. It is also important that we do the right things while we have our opportunity. In this particular lesson, uh, in this particular passage of scripture, David and his brothers are getting ready to be reunited, amen. Reunited from a point as to where David was eventually sold unto the Midianite, which was his cousins, amen, when he ended up in Potiphar's house, amen, as a servant. David had talked about and told his brothers and his father and mother about how at one day he would be over them. Amen. And you have to go back and read a lot more. I don't have time to cover it all, but David uh, brothers had a bad dislike for him. Amen. And this one day, uh, David, excuse me, Joseph's father sent him out. Amen. To find his brothers. And once he found his brother, he, he, he was a tattletale and told things he wasn't supposed to. But the next time he went out, his brother saw him coming from a, a long ways off. Amen. And they conspired within themselves. Amen. To sell him. Amen. Well, actually to kill him, but they eventually sold him unto the Midianites. Amen. And after he was sold unto the Midianites, he went unto uh, Egypt and he eventually served uh Potiphar, amen, and he eventually was thrown in jail. God uh, gave him the ability to interpret dreams, and from there, uh, he was able to interpret Pharaoh's uh, dream. Pharaoh is just a name, not a person, amen, more of a title as king, amen. And so he was able to interpret uh, Pharaoh's dream, and because he was able to interpret Pharaoh's dream and to save Egypt from becoming a desolate during the time, of the famine, David was appointed king. During that time, or uh, second to the king, David was appointed second to the king. And during that time, David was given a, a a wife and he had two sons during that time. And so once he had those sons, the Bible tells us in the 41st chapter that David uh, soon forgot the evil that was placed upon him while he was uh, with his brothers and his father. Mind you, this is some 17, almost 18 years later that David now finally realized that it's going to be all right. And he's beginning to not feel so bad about what has happened to him. But he has trans a lot of things that transpired from the time he was placed into captivity up until now. At this time, it was a great famine in the land of Canaan, amen, and his father sins his brothers unto Egypt for grain. 
David is there, but he's uh, the governor or he's second in charge uh, to the king of Pharaoh at this time. They began to talk to uh, David, not knowing who David is. And David realizing that these are his brothers. Amen. And that's why we are this morning. Hunted by shame and hunted by your past. There was two things going on here. David, even though he was living a great life, second to the king, and it even says in the prior chapter that David had really put that past him because he had a wife and two sons at that time. Well, here it is, a uh, old trouble staring him right de dead in his face. Amen. And David has to make a decision. David could have easily had them put to death or, or put them out or whatever he wanted to do, uh, have done to him. But David had compassion in his heart. So that brings a question, amen, is a two-part question. How do we act when we meet people that has done us wrong? Do we have compassion? Do we have forgiveness in our heart? Are we still hunted by what they did to us? And then as the other part of it, it goes on to the verse that we read. Uh, Reuben said, then I tell you not to sin against the boy. The boy is being uh, Joseph, amen. And Joseph understood, amen, excuse me, Reuben understood that he shouldn't have been doing what they were doing against his brother. And now here it is that Reuben is saying, not knowing that Joseph is before them, but he understood that because they done wrong, wrong is always going to follow. But if you read the, the scripture real closely, amen, we'll find out that they have an opportunity. We won't be able to get into all that today to be able to reunite. And so that's what we have to learn how to do. We have to re, uh, learn how to reunite. When we do somebody wrong and we have an opportunity, we need to be able to go back and tell them that I'm sorry, amen. We need to be show uh, remorse, uh, amen, when we're dealing with people that we've done wrong. And then if you were done wrong, we got to be willing to be able to uh, forgive people that has done you wrong. Now, I know we always have this saying, we got to learn how to forgive and forget. But if you can see in the passage of scripture, uh, 17, 18, almost 20 years later, we understand that David, I don't know why I keep saying David, but Joseph had had opportunity to forgive his brother, but he hadn't forgotten, amen. But he had forgiven them so that he was able to receive them when they came asking for grain, to buy grain. And that's what we have to be able to do. We have to get past that point of being able to have hate and malice in our heart where we have that, that problem right here in the forefront of our mind. We've got to be, be able to put it in the back of our mind. Joseph was able to put it in the back of his mind. He hadn't forgotten, amen. He understood what he had went through, but he understood that God had uh, answered his dream. His dream was when he was young that he would be uh, over both his father and mother, amen, uh, father, mother, and brothers, amen. And now here it is that God has answered the dream, and now he has a chance to be over. But how is he going to react while he's over his brothers, father, and mother, amen, over the family? We understand that it will be easy for any of us to act sideways with people that have done us wrong. But Joseph didn't do that. And we got to have that same kind of spirit down in our heart. We got to learn how to forgive. We'll never forget. I wish I could tell you you would forget. But we got to learn how to forgive and move past what is going on in your life, has went on in your life. So we're haunted by some of the things that we have done. And we're ashamed of some of the things that has been done to us. But also... We are the same people that do people wrong also. We don't we don't we don't just go through life and just be done wrong all the time. We do people wrong also. So as we do wrong, ask for forgiveness. 17, 18, I can't put a exact number on it, 19 years later, here it is that the the brothers had the opportunity to ask for forgiveness. In the later chapter over in the 40, 30, 40, uh, fourth chapter, they actually asked for forgiveness. Amen. They were re reunited. But here it is that uh, Joseph, he's able to move past what they have done. I'm going to read you this and then we're going to close out. This is part of our uh, Sunday school lesson this morning. It's part of our introduction. I, I would hope that somebody would go to Sunday school this morning. 
introduction. After David, after David, double sin and adultery and murder of God sent the prophet Nathan to him with a metaphor about a stolen lamb, a poor man beloved pet. David was incensed at the sin described and declared that the man who had done this evil deed deserved to die. That's 1 Samuel 12, amen. Nathan informed David that it was he, the man, and confronted him with the word of God. It was the word and not Nathan that caused David to see himself, which led him to confess and repent. Psalm 51. There is no indication that David was haunted by any shame for his sins until he experienced this experience with Nathan. He was reminded that his offense was against God. Joseph's brothers confronted their sins against him. Their father ultimately against God. Seventy years had passed since Joseph was a slave. There is no record. Amen. Excuse me. Some 20 years had passed since they sold Joseph as a slave. There is no record that his brother was remorseful, which stirred Jacob's command to send them to purchase corn in Egypt, grain in Egypt. The years of family affected all the Middle East at that time. Apparently, they were hunted by shame for what they had done. God used a famine to instruct, to instill their cold hearts and lead them to confession and repentance. The lesson basically is saying is that you have an opportunity to look back at what you have done. And we got to be all ready to ask God for forgiveness. Some 20 years has passed. It says there's no record that they had any type of remorse about what they had done. Same as David when he uh, committed a sin of adultery and had uh, had the soldier killed. Amen. There's no indication there was any remorse. But God has a way to bring these things back to our remembrance. We as Christians, we got to stop living in the shame of past. Amen. And move past what we've been going through. One of the things that uh I found out is that you can't fly too high if you weight it down with too much weight. Even ships say, man, sometimes when they get overloaded, they have to throw off some of the cargo that's on the ship. Some of these things that have you weighted down, you need to get rid of them, amen. I'm glad you asked, how do you get rid of them, preacher? You get rid of some of these things by asking for forgiveness, amen. You get rid of these things, amen, by not doing the things that you have been doing in the past. You get rid of these things that got you weighted down by uh, not only asking for forgiveness, amen, but forgiving other people, amen. We got to learn how to move past our past shame and stop being humbled by things that we don't need to be humbled by. Everybody has sinned. Everybody has fallen short of the glory of God. So I don't know what your past shame or your past problem was. Whether you did this or you did that, amen. There's so many sins that you could name. But we got to move past it. We can't be held bound by those things that we did in the past. When you have an opportunity, you need to ask for forgiveness. When you have an opportunity, you need to forgive. The scripture uh, very well says in uh Matthew that we read earlier, it says, if you forgive man of their sin, so shall God forgive you of your sin. And then it goes on and says, but if you don't forgive man, your neighbor, your friend of their sin, neither will God forgive you of yours. It's time to move past what we have done. There's no perfect person. Everybody has done something wrong. Whether it's hurting somebody else, hurting yourself, or sinning against God, such as David uh, did. Amen. Ask for forgiveness. Move forward. And I promise you that God will move past, allow you to move past those sins. Amen. 
our time is up. Uh, uh, we'll have a more complete sermon today at uh, 9, excuse me, 11, 15 at Morgan Grove. May God bless you. May God keep you. Amen. You can make it.